In this lesson, you will learn about bioequivalence studies. In general, generic drug applicants are not required to repeat animal and clinical studies because the drug's safety and efficacy are already established by the innovator drugs. Accordingly, they are required to conduct bioequivalence studies comparing bioavailability between the innovator and generic drugs and demonstrating their therapeutic equivalence. If this is not feasible, pharmacological effects supporting therapeutic efficacy or therapeutic effectiveness in major indications should be compared. In the case of oral dosage forms, administered drugs disintegrate and dissolve in the stomach. Then, the dissolved active pharmaceutical ingredient is absorbed through the intestinal epithelial cells into the blood vessels. In bioequivalence studies, blood samples are collected at regular intervals to measure the concentration of the active pharmaceutical ingredient. We compare the differences in absorption rate and absorbed amount of the active pharmaceutical ingredient, using this information to predict the difference in the therapeutic effect. The therapeutic confirmatory studies are usually highly variable, so several hundred subjects are required to demonstrate the statistical validity of the results. On the other hand, bioequivalent studies usually involve a small number of subjects because blood concentration can be measured precisely. For this reason, we can confirm therapeutic equivalence economically and efficiently in bioequivalent studies, which use pharmacokinetics as an indicator. Next, we will take a look at the steps in the procedure for bioequivalence evaluation. First, a reference product is selected. Among three lots of the innovator drug, the one with an intermediate dissolution profile should be selected as the reference product. Next, the reference and test products are compared to prove the similarity of dissolution profiles. Finally, the reference and test products are administered to humans and the drug blood concentration is measured to evaluate the bioequivalence. In bioequivalence studies, one dose unit or clinical usual dose is administered for a single dose study. Drugs are administered with 100 to 200 milliliters of water after fasting for more than 10 hours and fasting should continue for at least four hours after the drug is taken. An appropriate study protocol should be determined, including the required number of subjects and sampling intervals, based on preliminary studies and previously reported data. The rationale of the protocol should also be explained. Generally, crossover studies should be employed, with random assignment of individual subjects to each group. The reference and test products are administered to subjects in two groups at different times, and the results with each formulation are evaluated. The advantage of a crossover design is smaller subject number requirements because the variations in data are smaller compared to a parallel group comparative study. On the other hand, if the study period is long, this type of study can place significant burdens on the subjects. In addition, a washout period is needed. Washout periods are used in crossover studies between the administration of test and reference products, and they should usually be more than five times the elimination half-life of the substance to be measured. Therefore, in the case of drugs with extremely long half-lives, a parallel design could be considered. A sufficient number of subjects for assessing bioequivalence should be included. Regarding the selection of subjects, healthy adult volunteers should be enrolled in principle, but when it is unfavorable to use healthy subjects due to potent pharmacological action or adverse effects, patients receiving the medication should be enrolled. Generally, one dose unit or clinical usual dose is administered to the subjects. Bioequivalence studies should typically be performed as single-dose studies. Multiple-dose studies may be employed for drugs which are repeatedly administered to patients. For immediate-release product studies, drugs are usually given to subjects with 100 to 200 milliliters of water, normally 150 milliliters, after fasting for more than 10 hours. For solubility-enhanced products, extended-release products, and enteric-coated products, 
Bioequivalent studies should be performed as single-dose studies for both fasted and fed conditions. Blood samples should generally be used for measurements. Blood samples should be taken at a frequency sufficient for assessing Cmax, AUC, and other parameters. There should be at least seven sampling points, including immediately before administration, one point before Cmax, two points around Cmax, and three points during the elimination phase. Sampling should be continued until AUCT is over 80% of AUC infinity, normally more than three times the elimination half-life after Tmax. However, when the elimination half-life is extremely long, samples should be collected until at least 72 hours have passed. Generally, the unchanged active ingredient should be measured. Major active metabolites may be measured instead of the unchanged active ingredient, when it makes sense to do so. Now, let's look at the assessment of bioequivalence. AUCT and Cmax are generally used as parameters for bioequivalence determination. AUCT and Cmax are usually log-normally distributed, so these parameters are logarithmically transformed before the statistical analysis. If the 90% confidence interval of the differences in average values of logarithmic AUCT and Cmax between the test and reference products is within the acceptable range of log 0.8 to log 1.25, the test product is considered to be bioequivalent to the reference product. Other parameters can be used as supporting information. However, test products are accepted as bioequivalent even if the confidence interval is not in the above range when the following three conditions are satisfied. First, the differences in average values of assessed logarithmic parameters between the two products are within the range log 0.9 to log 1.11. Second, the dissolution profile is evaluated to be similar, or in the case of extended release products, the dissolution profile must be equivalent. And third, the total number of subjects is at least 20. This session covered the typical bioequivalence study protocols for the Japanese guidelines. The English version of the Japanese guidelines for bioequivalent studies is available at the URLs shown on this slide.